So now I'm, I got my little whiteboard, my little eight and a half by 11 whiteboard. So we're going to talk cumulative flow diagram because you got to draw a cumulative flow diagram. Sorry, my podcast people. Um, but maybe I'll hopefully I'll, I'll give enough verbal description. So all cumulative flow diagram is basically a chart. You know, you get your top one is usually like points or hours or counts on the vertical y-axis and then on the horizontal axis is time and all the systems kind of do it differently and everybody does it you know you could measure this it's harder to do this manually than it is with this computer system that's, that has it theoretically cumulative flow diagram the top line at the very top which is the amount of work you're going to be doing should be pretty relatively flat though it does change and we'll have other episodes where we talk about good ones and bad ones and i'll show you the difference but today i just kind of want to talk what we're looking for um and when you first start off this is all the work to be done to be done so on the very far left hand side of time like time zero point and then it gets your days two three four five etc right to be done and that's going to be all one color ideally much like the i'm going to draw the ideal version on here much like the it's a burn up chart right so ideally you start at zero and you go all the way up until it matches up with the amount of work be done so every day a little bit of this to be done area gets smaller this area underneath the curve gets smaller and then there's a, a curve there's usually a band up here. So there's a narrow band that's called the in-process band. That starts at zero, pretty much goes all the way up and until the point where you get almost before the end of the period you got if you get all the work done. So I'm drawing on here a little band where this is the in-process band and this is the final closed or accepted band. So ideally, in a cumulative flow diagram, the to-be area, to-be-done area, will get smaller and smaller and smaller over time. As you move right on the graph, it'll get smaller. The in-process band in the ideal situation will pretty much be consistent through the entire... When you get a really good team and they're only taking... The same amount of work to be in process every time and this is where you get that whip limit this is your whip limit controlling that right if i say i only want to have two stories in process at a time then i only have two stories in process and then the last area is and you can have different layers and different things but i can't do this and do a podcast and kind of show what it is the last area which will grow bigger over time right and that's at the bottom right hand side that's your close or accepted area so the amount of work you close as you go through time in the sprint will get bigger and bigger and bigger people will analyze this thing to death right and they'll figure out and, and calculate i just use it because I, I i just put it on the dashboard so i can show the team how they're working right and uh i just want to look at the shapes so I look at, I don't analyze the time. Some people that have lots of time on their hands will analyze like, I, 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 the, the reason why I do this in this way with all my dashboards first, all this um, accounting, agile accounting, as we talked about earlier in another episode, my developers and my testers and my teammates and the people who are working don't care, nor do they have time to analyze what their time, the little, little micro analyzes. Maybe if I'm used to doing reports <laughs> and I'll report out, here's the thing. All I want them to do is look at the shape. Are we being consistent? And the reason I want to say happy scrumming, enjoy your weekend. Hope you go out and do some fun stuff today.